we do not devote days and nights to the work, but go to tinkering upon our lives to improve them, who will build the railroads? And if the railroads are not built, how shall we get to heaven on season? But if we stay at home and mind our business, who will want the railroads? We do not ride on the railroad. It rides on us. We are living in a digital age. It is the age of new, fascinating technologies, age of computing and inventions that make our lives easier and more comfortable. It is also the age of mass communications, where all the necessary information is just a single click of a button away. It is the age of travelling. We drive in cars with the powerful engines on the huge highways, riding on the trains that run over 300 miles an hour, flying with low-cost airlines to all corners of the world. We're living in the world our forefathers wouldn't even dare to dream of. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front the essential facts of life and see if I could learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I did not wish to live for what was not life. Living is so dear, nor did I wish to practice resignation unless it was quite necessary. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life, to live so sturdily and so Spartan-like as to put rout all that was not life. When we're unhurried and wise, we perceive that only great and worthy things have any permanent and absolute existence, that petty fears and petty pleasures are but the shadow of the reality. This is always exhilarating and sublime. By closing the eyes and slumbering, and consenting to be deceived by shows, men establish and confirm their daily life of routine and habit everywhere, which still is built on purely illusionary foundations. Why should we live in such a hurry and waste of life? We're determined to be starved before we're hungry, Men say that a stitch in time saves nine, and so they take thousands of stitches today to save nine tomorrow. We have St. Vitus's dance and cannot possibly keep our heads still. Simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. I say, let your affairs be as two or three, and not a hundred or a thousand. It's an information-based civilization. To be informed means to survive. It is necessary for us to know what's going on in our neighborhood or in the place where we work. Knowing about the world outside our living rooms helps us to make decisions and creating opinions on common things. And with the reading, listening to or watching the news, we also learn to understand the humankind. I'm sure I never read any memorable news in the newspaper. If we read of one man robbed, or murdered, or killed by accident, or one house burned, or one lot of grasshoppers in winter, we never need to read another. One is enough. To a philosopher, all news, as it is called, is gossip, and they who edit and read it are old women over their tea. We're talking on mobile phones, sending emails and using web communicators for instant messaging. Internet is a fantastic invention which enables us to stay in touch with the whole world without ever leaving our own house. Using all the technologies makes it possible for us to keep abreast of the age. The ones who are not following the trend have no chance to succeed in today's world. Solitude is not measured by miles of space that intervene between a man and his fellows. We meet at very short intervals, not having any time to acquire any new value for each other. The mass men lead lives of quiet desperation. What is called resignation is confirmed desperation. A stereotyped but unconscious despair is concealed under what are called the games and amusement of mankind.
Let us not be upset and overwhelmed in that terrible whirlpool. If the engine whistles, let it whistle till it's hoarse for its pains. If the bell rings, why should we run? We will consider what kind of music they are like.